Almost 13 years have passed since Tony Stark built his first Iron Man suit. Since then, his suit and the VFX used to create it have changed tremendously. Both have advanced technically and visually in a kind of poetic synchronized evolution within both the Marvel Cinematic Universe and our own. Stay tuned until the end where I'll introduce you to Justin Fields and show you how you too can earn a living creating characters for TV and movies using Skillshare for free. In the first Iron Man film, Tony Stark builds an armoured suit to enable him to escape from the cave. In 2008, the VFX industry was fairly advanced and capable of doing some incredible work. But because of the director and Hollywood in general tends to have fear of all things virtual, they opted for a practical Iron Man suit. Stan Wilson's studio made a practical suit out of aluminum, epoxies, flexible urethane and leather, all painted in the company's proprietary metallic chrome paint. Weighing in at 90 pounds, the suit was too large and heavy for the actor and indeed his stunt double to easily move around in. So for the scene where Stark exits the cave, a CG suit had to be made. The Embassy VFX were given the task of creating the CG suit and thanks to the work from Stan Wilson, they were able to measure and model their CG suit to the practical one. They even had some specific parts mailed to them to be able to copy the precise colours and textures. After escaping the cave, Stark gets home and builds an improved version of the suit, the Mark II. For this suit, Stan Wilson's studio also built a practical suit, although it didn't actually appear fully assembled on film. Industrial Light & Magic was tasked with creating the CG Mark II suit, and as did Embassy VFX with the Mark I, they used the practical suit to measure and model their virtual one. ILM had to pay special attention to Stark's surroundings because the Mark II suit is basically a mirror that reflects everything around it. When they showed the scene to the director, he didn't know what parts of the suit were real and what parts were digital. As it turns out, it was all digital. The Mark III suit was similar to Mark II in that it was a combination of both practical and virtual suits. But here, instead of trying to avoid the use of CGI, they began to embrace it, using it as a tool to make the suit better. Again, Stan Wilson made a practical suit, but this time the suit was made so that individual parts could be put on or taken off. This gave the actor more freedom of movement in the action scenes. For a lot of shots, Robert Downey Jr. wore only the helmet or shoulder pads. The rest of his body was covered in markers for motion capture. ILM used its proprietary motion capture system called Imocap to collect Robert's movement data in order to animate the CG suit. In the Stark Expo scene, no motion capture suit was used. The CG suit was directly animated over the top of the tuxedoed Robert Downey Jr. High resolution photographs of set and surroundings were taken to be used as reference material for the lighting of the CG suit, making sure the CG suit sat correctly in the original plate. In Iron Man two, several suit evolutions appeared. The Mark IV, which was optimized for lifespan, and the Mark V, designed to be a portable one-off suit. As the suit capabilities became more and more part of the script, they also became a key element to the VFX teams. Now they didn't just have to concentrate on how it moved and looked, they had to delve into the workings of how it was put together and how it all worked. The Mark VI suit appeared in The Avengers and brought in a lot of visual and technological advancements. The Mark VI had a rocket pack instead of hand thrusters. This freed up the hands and meant that Stark could move easier in the air, but also meant that the VFX team had to add more complex rigging to animate the CG suit. In a scene known as the car wash scene, the VFX teams not only had to work out how the suit could be removed from Stark, but also how its internal components would look and move. An asset had to be created for each component and each matched to Stark's movements as he walked. 
At the end of the film, we see the Mark VII suit, a suit that can be activated by a pair of bracelets. These bracelets would be the foundation for the future suits. A big jump happened in Iron Man 3. Tony Stark creates over 30 different suits, a force he called the Iron Legion. All these suits started from the original suit, but the animators were given additional tools to allow them to alter the rigging on the fly. This meant that each Iron Man suit could be made to move in a different way, giving each one its own unique character. However, the rigging for the Mark 42 was by far the most complex. The script called for the suit to be used in everyday scenes, such as sitting on a couch or giving a massage. This scene required the suit to move in complicated and subtle ways, and there was no quick movement, smoke, fire, or explosions to hide behind. Stark had 49 computer chips, called micro-repeaters, implanted in his arms, which enabled him to control and summon the 24 separate parts of the Mark 42. This scene was especially difficult because they had to make these random pieces of technology fly across the room, combine with the movements of Robert's performance, and then have them adjust and connect together seamlessly. The Mark 50 suit's predecessors incorporated a micro-storage technology that allowed them to be deployed in confined spaces, but the Mark 50 is made from billions of gold, titanium, nanoparticles stored within Stark's new removable arc reactor. This technology was more fluid-like and allowed Stark to morph the suit to summon weapons at will. The VFX team had to make the suit flow over Stark in a manner similar to liquid metal but still appear to be solid. Unlike a traditional superhero suit that flexes and stretches, the Mark 50 wasn't fabric, it was metal and had to appear so. The suit deployment effect was created by using a multi-layer effect that Framestore created for the 2015 film Poltergeist. An inner layer of tech and circuitry forms over Stark's body, quickly followed by a layer of octagonal shapes interconnecting to form the outer shell. They perfected this technique in Avengers Endgame, where these octagonal shapes would form individual plates, which would then, once formed, lock into place. Texture, shading, and lighting techniques were also perfected, making the Mark 85 suit the most complicated, the most technologically advanced, and the most visually convincing, and unfortunately the last suit Tony Stark will ever wear. Especially as Robert Downey Jr. has declined to play any future Iron Man roles. So in the up-and-coming 2022 film Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Iron Man might just be played by actor Tom Cruise. This Iron Man would be from an alternative alternative universe and a different planet, Earth. And yes, in theory, the role of Tony Stark could be played by anyone, but we kind of like Tom Cruise for the role, although with a height of just 5 foot 7 inches, the next Iron Man suit evolution would have to be a little bit shorter. Would your dream job be designing and modelling characters for TV and movies? I took a free class with Justin Fields, who does just that, and he quickly showed me the ins and outs of ZBrush, and let me in on hundreds of industry-level tips. You too can learn everything you need to know about pretty much anything on probably the world's most comprehensive learning platform, Skillshare. And if you're one of the first thousand to use the link in this video's description, you'll receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium. There's so much to learn on there, so give this free one-month trial a go right now. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget the links to the music used in this video are in the video description. And as always, be sure to let us know in the comments which movie VFX you'd like to see behind next.